welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. Well, I am so thrilled today on Your Brand Amplified to have somebody who is as mission-centered with branding as I am. Probably more so. You do have a few more years on me, Rich (laughs) Kozak, but not too many. So Rich, you are the founder, CEO of Impact Driven Publishing and Rich Brands, and you've had an amazing career in branding. And we were talking before this episode, you left for a little bit and then you were called back to it. So will you walk us through that journey? How did you fall into or decide on a career in branding and working with corporations? And then what was your transition like? A lot of questions there. Yes. How did I choose a career in branding? Is That's the trickiest one. But thank you for having me, Anika. Yeah. It's a blessing to talk with someone, like you said, who is in sync with understanding what brand is and what it's not. And so thank you. It's a blessing to be here. For anyone who's listening, I am telling you what you hear on this podcast will be a blessing for your business and possibly for your life. So stick around. <laughs> it happens all the time. So I've spent 46 years defining and languaging brands and launching them. Most of that time was with big companies. I sat on global brand teams. I ran what you might call a integrated marketing communications firm, a high-tech ad agency that also taught brand the process. We literally taught big companies what the process is of how you assess how you see yourself and how others see you fixing the gaps, you know, dealing with what their strategies were and what they need to do with the brand and every marketing execution element they needed or they could afford that year to get to their strategy or the, their sales objectives or their positioning strategy, whatever it is. So big boy branding, let's call it that. And I sat on global brand teams. We had partners in 21 countries. I'm a certified global branding consultant. These days, that and five bucks will get you a cup of coffee. But well, it was a long time. <laughs> doing that. Okay. You heard me in my story say I was addicted to it. I was doing all nighters when I was 50 years old and I chose to resign what I considered was an addictive career because I was just spending all my time was always there. And, you know, my family took second fiddle and look, I'm lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones. I've been married 46 years and 51 Valentine's days to my wife, Denise, that is a God blessing. Okay. One of the biggest blessings that anyone can have. And I stopped and I said, I don't do branding anymore. And I started doing other things, creating residual income, trying to be wise without having to go back and get a job and go back to the industry that I'd left because I figured I would just get addicted again Hmm. in terms of my time. So let's just call me a recovering workaholic. If you want to be (laughs) poor. But it's because I love branding. (laughs) Look, I don't know if any of you out there are adult ADHD, but it's like when every phone call is a different language or a different industry and you like squirrels, (laughs) that's the best job on the planet. So, and I love language anyway. So with partners in different countries. So I changed my prayer and Lord, I don't believe I'm supposed to be doing this for my life. Show me what you want me to do. I'm ready. And I started listening and over years, people started individuals whom I knew, and I'm a consummate networker, reached me and said, I need help with my personal branding. Would you help me? Because you're the great back. And I said, no, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Three of them right in a row, month one, month two, month three, said, that's not true. You just don't charge for it (laughs) because everybody around our table uses your language, you know, and I want your help. So I agreed, created process. When I finished the third one, um, there was a moment when I realized that what was happening, these were all three people who wanted to impact other individuals' lives through their work, through their gift. In one case, one person felt it was their calling. Mm -hmm. And they knew they could clearly see in their mind's eye before they even had those impacts, the impacts they knew they could have on specific types of people. And they really wanted to have those impacts. And what I realized when we pull from a person's heart Mm -hmm. who is impact driven, one from their heart now, not from their head, because we can all make lists. Don't make that mistake. Mm -hmm. The vision of whom they clearly see impacting and the levels of impacts Mm -hmm. that they see making when they're 
are thriving at what they plan on doing, or maybe they're already doing it. Maybe they've done it for 30 years and they want to make higher level impacts or take it to new geographies or new media, but they're at the gate to the next level of their brand, even if they just started it and the next level is launch, you know, or they've been doing it for years and the next level is how do I take this to a higher level? I don't think branding and I don't trust it and it's tricky and everybody says you need a guru and, you know, your special language. None of that's true, by the way. So it's just steps. And I've been teaching those steps for 46 years. So I chose to help these individuals. And what I realized was if God put those desires for impacts in their hearts, that this is God's work. It's not even my work. <laughs> and this person who used to think it was his skill mm -hmm. realizes in a moment of clarity that it's his gift. Yeah. And that I get to do it. And what happens when I do it is that people, their businesses, because it's branding, but it's done very well, it's defining and languaging a brand so that it gets unique credit in consistent language that transfers energy. These are important words because that's what makes a brand come alive. Consistent language that transfers energy where people go, oh, I love that. What? What is that? You know, I want that. Look, I got to go. But can I have your card? It comes alive instead of, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Because most brands fall flat. They just do because they haven't done the work to define and language themselves uniquely to get credit for what makes them outstanding. And so when we do it that way, they race to those impacts. Mm -hmm. And because they race to the impacts, they attract exactly whom they envisioned attracting. They're using the care about language of their target audiences. It's like, duh. And they get to the money faster. But that's not why I'm back in branding. When their abundant platform for their business is successful, like it's going to be faster, that platform enables them to step more easily into their purpose. And God has put us here for a reason. Might not be our jobs, okay? <laughs> or our jobs or what we do for a living might not be why we're really here, but they are a vehicle to create what we need to live. And if we do that beautifully, and if we're impact driven, and those are the only people I work with, the people that are focused on impact. That platform that we create for the business yeah. enables us to step into our purpose. So I'm saying to clients, here's three books. The first gets you credit for your expertise. The second is a bridge book. And the third allows you to step into your purpose. So now you're doing both. And they go, I'm not writing any books. Well, yeah, okay. But we have all kinds of stories from people that want to write a book, but they don't know what marketing is. They just want a book. And that's a lot of people, right? I want a book. And I think you appreciate this. I will say to them, I've learned to say in as snarky a voice as I can, well, you have two options. I've got a book or a book is a stake in the ground that moves your brand forward and it helps to shape the perception which is what a brand is mm -hmm. that's clear that allows your brand to move to its next milestone and beyond praise god mm -hmm. and it just gets us closer and closer by the way i've just finished my 54th one day workshop oh my gosh. in the last seven years 54th in the last seven years. <laughs> It's called The Brand You Will Become. It's a one-day workshop intensive where we go through the seven steps of impact-driven branding, and they people watch their brand come alive on paper at these steps. They go, oh, my God, I'm watching my brand come alive. These are people that never expected. Praise God. And we go, oh, there's one. We actually count <laughs> praise gods. That's a new marketing metric, which I never expected <laughs> I would be counting. I don't hesitate to say this is a blessing. You heard me say it before, when you have this power, it is a blessing for your business and is a blessing for your life. Yes. And why shouldn't it be? And the reality that I get to do this work, Anika, it feels like love. It didn't feel like love at the agency. Okay, seriously, yeah. like, there's a lot of pressure. You got a lot of people, you got $14 billion company. There's a lot of pressure. It's like, you know, you're in, you're out, you know, you're worried about losing a client. It feels like love. Yeah. And well, I spend a lot of hours doing it, but I do it because I get to do it. Yeah. And that's really beautiful. And that's something I work with companies primarily that I'd all say they have a social component, whether they're for profit, nonprofit, there's something good, but goes to your word. 
impact. Mm. That's a much easier way to describe it. So I started then saying heart-centered people because like we were discussing before we started, authenticity is so important these days. And it's something that brands are having to move towards, that people are having to start to show. And it's something that I find with my students in my branding class, I started having them do their presentations on their personal brand and build their personal brand during the course of the class because so many of them didn't know exactly who they were. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to go after that job or that internship, or they were at an internship that was tokenizing them or treating them differently than other interns were being treated and it wasn't the right fit. So I said, okay, throw out the idea of branding for a company. Now, some still did that because they did know who they were, but most of my students ended up doing their final presentations last semester on their personal brand and developing that to really figure out what are their values? Who are they? Because they need that information to show up. No, but this is why I'm like, okay, you're speaking my language because if you don't know who you are and how to show up authentically as your own brand, then you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be able to do everything that you can do, whether it's with your career, your personal life, whatever comes to you. (laughs) Stepping into those most comfortable shoes you'll ever wear (laughs) of feeling comfortable in your own skin requires, and this is not some checklist, self-love. And I just came from three days at the Best You Expo. So boy, oh boy, I was (laughs) surrounded by people who are experts, speakers, trainers, coaches, and a lot of, you know, one of them teaches sell strategy. They talk about make sure you you are and that you sell with authenticity. Anyway, so here's a blessing. (laughs) This process called Impact Driven Branding that my book that is coming out in the next month, Impact Driven Branding, seven steps to ensure your brand impacts people's lives in the world and be your personal brand or an entity you create. And you're the founder, either or, you know, both, right? Right. Literally what it does is it gives you access to your own authenticity. You never have to become anything that you're not. You step into these comfortable shoes. I have two things to say about your student thing. I think you're brilliant. And I think you're a blessing to the universe to do that. One thing is people don't know what an umbrella brand is. And the other is for kids who come from, and I'm going to use a word, marginalized backgrounds, that could be they come from rural Arkansas, which is its own culture, or they're of a certain color, or they're immigrants. And so, you know, it's kind of like, you're not from around here. It's like they're marginalized in some way. Yeah. Or they feel it because that's what's important. They feel like one of my clients is the global director of diversity, equity, and inclusion at a law firm in 11 countries. Mm-hmm. She's based here, 4,000, I think, employees. And we have been creating the language for the next generation of leaders in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we talk a lot about marginalized backgrounds, cultures and subcultures and the way people are not honored. And we talk about the true power of natural diversity. I mean, think about that, right? There's like global cultural competence. I want that. <laughs> what's in there. Well, it's coming. Okay. And it marks the next generation of leaders. So what you're doing in enabling students who are stepping into their adulthood to get their feet on the ground of knowing themselves better so they can use that foundation as a strong platform instead of being on shaky ground and wondering if they're worthy or they're enough or those things that happen to so many young people because of what's happened in their life or their family or whatever, or where they were raised or where they ended up in school. It's brilliant. It's amazing. I love it. You are a gift. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing that. I didn't see any way around it. Again, I think that you and I are very much on the same wavelength with this is the more people that we can touch and help them understand who they are as a brand and that that live in their authenticity, the better the whole world's going to be. Oh, you know, I mentioned the umbrella brand, so I better unwrap that. Let me do one sentence, okay? (laughs) People are so many things. They're a student, but they're a cello player, but they love to climb mountains, but they're a brother or they're an uncle or they're a nephew or they're, you know, whatever, right? They're all these things. And the more years they have, like if I started naming all the things I am, like we'd have to be here for a while, you know, and they want to like, well, what's my brand? Well, I'm really good at this, but I'm really good at this. And companies are like that too, but individuals, there is a concept called an umbrella brand where if you name and you connect to the heart of the person you learn who they are and you understand those things each of those things they are is a spoke in the umbrella but you name the umbrella brand so only they could have it and then instead of people looking on you do this i thought you did this and they see all those things they go oh that fits it is 
a wonderful concept and people don't know that it exists or that it's possible. It's possible. It's possible for every person. And those individual brands that we help here through the impact driven branding process, that's exactly what they end up doing. Whether they're 72 years old and they were a physician for 40 years that clinically cured people from stress and anxiety and anger in 10 sessions. And they wrote a book in 1991, you know, the 14 day stress cure. And no, they're not getting credit for it. And now we've created a brand that stands for life mastery mm. because they understand that stress mastery and there's no such thing as stress he'll say it you got to do the root causes and we get to the root causes there's no stress so was there any stress ever anyway if you understand life <laughs> stress mastery is the beginning of life mastery and so he's now speaking to the language of life mastery for future generations it's like really well who could do that not too many people yeah but he could and he's ready and he loves winning at life it's one of his book titles it's like i get chills on my spine and so will you it's like that's the umbrella brand yeah. Right. That's it's awesome. awesome. It is. It's so powerful. So, so you took on the three projects with individuals. I did. And yeah. out of that, you launched this <clears throat> whole new business. I decided I'm supposed to be doing this, but yeah. for a different reason. It's God's work. It's not even mine. So I call it Rich Brands. It was eight years ago. Eventually, I joined Ventured with someone who's been publishing independent author's books for 36 years. And I hand her a beautifully congruent, mm -hmm. my mother was an English teacher, by the way, manuscript, and she helps publish books. And we publish my client author's books and I help them write them, I help them conceive them, structure them, name the intriguing titles and subtitles of chapters that makes it all in brand language and all relevant to their desired umbrella brand. And then they step quickly into their comfortable shoes. Yeah. You've teased a couple of, of people that you've worked with, but I'd love to hear mm. what's one of the biggest impacts that you've made through your work, like seeing somebody go from really being uncertain and not understanding who they are, kind of knowing they needed to get somewhere, but not really sure how to do it to the impact that they were able to create with your help. Wow. Several come to mind, but I'll choose one. There's a new author. She has never published a book before. She's a client author. She was introduced to me by a book coach who said, I don't think you're ready to write the book. I think you need a context. So she knew I taught branding. So she wants you to talk to Rich. And I talked to her and her husband. She has some physical and mental struggles that make it even more difficult for her to stay focused and write. But I told them, look, we'll make sure that her book comes out. She had dropped into, I will call a black hole. I don't want to give away her life by getting involved in something that really took her her totally out of the mainstream and then into a dark place. And when she finally got out of it, she was too shamed and embarrassed to admit it. So getting job gets weirded up her whole life. And now she's maybe in her 60s. Beautiful, beautiful woman used to be a news anchor mm. in a major TV station in a major metropolitan area based on billboards. Mm. Not anymore. And so she came to our half day. We do a half day every month explain people about this brand. It's called Branding You with Impact. It's like 97 bucks. It's the best thing you could ever do to go, oh yeah, I never thought of branding like that before. Yeah. So there you go. Branding You with Impact. So just know that, you know, get a link somewhere. I'm not here pitching it, but I guess I am. Anyway, but <laughs> you owe it to yourself. It literally, it will start the change for you. She comes to that and she says, I want to do this. And she comes to the one day, the one that I said I had 54 of, she comes to the one day intensive workshop where we actually work 90 minutes a week before, two weeks before to make sure the person's perfectly ready and they have an impact statement that they can use at every step. And it's really well written. And, and so it really just streamlines their work. And they sit there and the brand starts coming alive and they go, look, I really want to do this. And then we offer an eight week, like three days, a month break, two days, a month break, two days. So seven days over eight weeks with two months between for back and forth work. And by that time, the entire brand, all seven steps, all the work, characteristics, probably 25 or 30 characteristics. And in what ways must we become the characteristics that make our impacts? The unique way we say their expertises are in really powerful, unique, compelling language that makes you go, oh, I love that. What is that? <laughs> and then titles and subtitles of content, 15 for every category of expertise that you can use for three years. All of this in the language of the brand, done in eight weeks, done. 
and they came from no clarity and now they have completely defined in language brand that's perfectly them and they're like oh my god this is amazing so she did that and we had written three book titles what pulled her out of the dark dark hole happened to be her faith and so where her brand is going is in helping women worldwide become her language a christ confident woman so accept that that is she mm -hmm. That's not the first book. You can't go shooting that out there if you're not known. So we're talking about the first book that had to do with mental wellness. Mm -hmm. Something she knows something about, you know, firsthand, frontline. And she's explaining to me, she says, well, you know, Rich, the secret you hide holds you back. And I'm like, wait a minute, what oh. did you just say? <laughs> what did you just say? And she goes, see, I don't hold you back. And I'm like, now there is a book title. And yeah. she goes, I could write that book right now. And I'm like, you're on, that's <laughs> book one. And that was nine months ago in December, we finished that book. And that book is coming out probably, and I have a three-day event in July, and we'll probably use the three-day event to launch the book, but it is out. It is written. It's in its final manuscript. We have a cover. If you saw it from across a bookstore, you would go, whoa, that's a powerful. Mm -hmm. And so she starts doing the research on the book, and she learns there's a group in a major university that's been researching the secrets people hide oh. for 15 years and they've documented 50,000 interviews or people's and they say everyone not just you know some marginalized people everyone is carrying 13 categories of secrets five of which they'll never tell oh my gosh and she realizes her book will help millions of people heal because yeah. what she's done is taken something from behind her back that she's too ashamed to mention, hurtful, you know, family pro and put it right in front of her and put a spotlight on it. She decided to write a book. That's pretty courageous. And she knows it'll help other people heal. Yeah. I'd say that's probably the one I'll mention. How's that? Yeah. And I didn't know her. She was referred to me and it was on faith. And I made a commitment and I stuck to it. I promised her husband, her book would come out, but we better have a context first. So she did the branding work. Now that sounds convoluted and it sounds like a long, long time. And it sounds like a lot of, but it's just a simple example of step by step. And now she doesn't have one book. She has four books. This one's coming out and we have three right after it that lead her right to why she's here, which is to help other people step in to a faith that is so strong that they're in their purpose as well praise god and so not every client i have is a person of faith or, you know and talks like i do and so, however this is a very safe space mm -hmm. I've been married for 46 years and 51 Valentine's Day. So no woman is going to come into my, you know, that, I, you know, it's like <laughs> women feel safe. I'm happily married. I've got to live at the brand ranch. I'm the cook, you know, I'm too busy to get involved with anything else. And the process is so natural to me. The steps are natural, but the gift is the heart connect. Mm -hmm. The gift is to see what people can become yeah. and then not just know that and connect with it, but to articulate it and to guide them through it themselves, you know, with them, for them. It's a combination. Somebody's in a group. I'm with them. I'm doing it with them. I'm doing it for them. People are doing it for each other. Brand Accelerator Group is phenomenal. And people think, oh, I'm not good at that. And then they help others doing it. And they go like, maybe I am good at it. Yeah, duh. And you know, try to do your own brand sometime. It's not easy. <laughs> It's really easy for me to do other people's brands. Well, because we don't see what other people see in us. We don't always pick that up. One of my, I think, story points is that I've lived a lot of different cities. I didn't have an agency when I lived in Houston that did general PR, marketing, branding work. I did work with nonprofits. I did this and that. But people still call me from my time in Houston because they remember the work mm. that I did and what I was doing there. So your brand, to your point, Rich, is it carries out through everything you do. And you you have to realize that that is going to impact people and being able to share those secrets or those things that we all hide inside that will help somebody else see themselves and it's aspirational because that person goes really i look at you like this and you did that i can do that too yeah. and it gives them that motivation to keep on going and uh, to find their own zone of excellence and ironically those things that they were hiding now partially define them mm -hmm. because of the things mm -hmm. they overcome or were courageous enough to share and it makes them even even stronger in other people's eyes, even more of a model instead of hiding them and then nobody ever knows. Yeah. That's ironic, but it's a beautiful thing because we get to help each other. I mean, look, personal opinion, but I have a good source. We're only here for two reasons. One is to share love and the other is to praise God and everything else is man-made. So if we don't get the love thing right, 
<laughs> we need to go back to number one. <laughs> and love is forgiveness. Love is grace. Love is sharing. It's all those things. We manifest love in so many ways. And so when does branding become God's work? Maybe. It's when you reach into your heart and write down those impacts you clearly see making on others when you thrive. Mm -hmm. And then you accelerate your way to it and you step from that wonderful, successful platform of business into why you're really here. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the big differences and what I'm hearing from you is that mm -hmm. you said the process is the same. There are steps to follow for branding. Mm -hmm. But I used to work with multi-billion dollar companies, global yeah. companies, yeah. help them make more money. Now you work with people to help them understand and create their impact, which then I Makes think- more is, money. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's, one of the things I wrote down that will be a, what we call on the desired brand triangle, a competency, things you do over and over and over that you get a reputation for doing, and it starts to attract more people to come to you to encourage and facilitate, make it easy for people to make their impacts more quickly and be more successful quickly. And it shifts their mindset of the purpose of business being from money to impact. Yeah. When the purpose of business is impact and it helps you be more successful, it's like, wow. And that's where I get to live. So yeah. It sounds to me like you still are very invested in your work. Are you still doing those late nights because you're so oh, excited no. about the work? No, or? no, <laughs> not, not, yeah, no. <laughs> so I don't like to talk about how old I am, but I'm older than most people think by about 20 years. <laughs> but don't, we don't talk about it. But I have the energy of a 30 year old. I feel like I'm just getting started. Wow. But you cannot, if you're listening to this, please realize you can wear not getting any sleep as a badge of honor on your sleeve. It's not helping you. It's. <laughs> Chipping away at your elf. So get your sleep. I used to think sleep was, you know, I will get, I'll sleep when I'm retired. Anyway, sleep is really important. Sleep is healing. Sleep is rejuvenation. Sleep is when your body repairs itself. If you work out, sleep is when, you know, you're building more cells with those amino acids that you're eating and your super pills and your shakes. Anyway, it's seriously, I have a big birthday right in the middle of my three day in July, and I've hired a beast mode coach to help me put myself in because he's not going to put me in. I have to put myself, I get it into the best shape of my life. When I hit that birthday, that's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. So when people think about branding, I think a lot of times they think it's logo. They think it's the identity that you see, the fonts you use. That is part of it. But getting to what, what we like to talk about, the real meat of branding and the heart of it is who are you? What are you doing that's different than everybody else? Everybody has something unique to what their story is and to what they do and what they're offering to the world. So I know that you have a book coming out and you also do your workshops. Can you <laughs> share any of the things that you start with when you start the branding path? Oh, absolutely. I'll share again every month. The next one we do, although I think this podcast will probably come out anyway, but we do every month. I do a half day. It's either a Thursday or a Saturday. It rotates month to month. It's 8 a.m. to 12 noon Pacific. And it's called Branding You with Impact. And it talks about how to really think about branding and branding you. It's like what happens when you define and language a brand clearly and uniquely? What does that really mean? And what happens when you don't? When you realize these things, your mind shifts about what branding is and what your branding can be. And it does not ever have to be something that's not you. It's perfect when it's perfectly you. So imagine stepping into your own, giving access to your own authenticity. I will mention, since you and I get these questions all the time, here is a simple definition for a brand. A brand is a perception, but it's not your perception. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so if you know who you are and you know exactly who you are, people don't know exactly who you are. You're failing. <laughs> okay. You must create a consistent, and that's important for things, make a brand come alive. Consistency is number two. Congruence with the heart of the brand champion is number one. If you're doing something that's not congruent with who you are, you're always going to be in conflict. Stop it. Just stop it. Number two, <laughs> consistency. People are inconsistent. People don't trust them. Brands that are inconsistent, people don't trust them. Them. Okay. Third, language, unique language that transfers energy. And fourth, recognizability. You don't have those things. Sorry. When do you have those things? I'm trained in NLP. I started with a negative. <laughs> Never do that. When you have those four things, your brand comes alive and most brands fall flat. So you do the math. You're going to stand out. You're going to get credit for what makes you 
outstanding and unique. And all those things, that umbrella brand will precede you. It will go in front of you. It will create the path and people will look at what you do and they'll get it and they'll see you as unique. So let's say you're a life coach. There's a lot of them. How about a financial consultant? It's like, Okay. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of the answer to the question, why you comes from a very clearly defined and language brand and a well languaged and named umbrella brand. And that could be you and a tagline of what you do, or it could be an entity that you create and a clear, what does it do that says it with legs? And there's a lot of places it can go, you know, it has to say what it does and have legs and it'd be easy to spell, easy to remember, and easy to say. Those are the five acid tests. Most people fail on says what it does and has legs. They just fail. So by the way, if you want to hear that again, come to the half day, because at the end of the half day, you do 10 minutes on logos and taglines and you go, oh my God, this was like so valuable. <laughs> yeah. And then in 10 minutes on messaging hierarchy, how do you prioritize your top seven messages? Yeah. 10 minutes. Bam. Look, it's just a process. And those of us who teach it and bless Annika for the work she does, helping students know who they are so they can help brands know who they are. That's marvelous. I'd love that work. Get to make it simpler for you. Get to make it accessible because it's not something that needs to be cryptic or guru. Mm -hmm. mandatory. <laughs> you know, you don't need to learn an exotic language of branding. It's just the industry uses that exotic language to attract you and make you think <laughs> that you need a guru or that they know things you don't. You know, you don't need to call things a micro niche and talk about essences. You don't need to. <laughs> I, I am so over it. And I've never been there. It's straight talk. Yeah. So if you're looking for straight talk, you can trust and deep experience that you can count on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Callum com slash rich brands. That's it. Right, get on my calendar. Right. Yeah. So that half day is a wonderful starting point. And if you email me at richbrands.org, the website is richbrands.org. There's two offers right on the homepage. Get the free videos that give straight talk answers to frequently asked branding questions or get on my calendar for 30 minutes. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's like, I mean, how valuable is my my time? It's fifteen hundred dollars for ninety minutes, and I give you thirty minutes on my calendar. It's like what? So it's okay. Most people that have this much experience. I they're either on a yacht or on a beach. <laughs> I'm on Zoom with you, yeah. Yeah. okay? So take advantage of it. And the thing is, I get to do this. Yeah. And if the word I get is you're one whose life or business I'm supposed to touch with this gift, great, there we go. Yeah. It's not up to me, it's above my pay grade. And as you said, everything is energy. So I feel like we really do attract the right people hmm. once we really are living in an authentic space with our own brands ourselves, because it can be tricky. I've worked with people that I thought seemed like the right brand to work with, the right company to work with as a client on the PR side or on this marketing and then realized, oh, they're not exactly hmm. who I thought. So we also have to conserve our energy and make sure we're working with people who are mission aligned to the work that we're trying to do. And that's that is a, a, wise, is that is yeah. wise advice. I totally agree with you. But, and the other thing I'll just leave for our audience is that everything starts with the brand. So the number of people who come to me and say they want PR services or they want this or that, but don't know who they are and can't distill exactly who they are and what their brand is, you have to go back and start with that work. Because so, if you don't have that, you don't have your messaging. You don't have things that we can really share authentically when we're pitching you to the press. You know, you're absolutely right. And you know that when people like you and me who stand for branding say it, it sounds like we're selling our services. So I'm going to say it a different way. Ready? I sat on the International Board of Directors of the American Marketing Association. Mm -hmm. I was elected vice president of business market. I ran the business marketing conference one year. I was on the board of the AMA. I love marketing. Every part of my career has been marketing. I went to research company, high-tech ad agency, field sales, Fortune 50 company, worked in a factory as a product manager. Every aspect of marketing. I could talk for weeks. Don't get me started on marketing. <laughs> okay. And here's the comment. Write this down. Please write this down. Marketing, and I'm talking about your marketing, you listening right now, your marketing when it's at its best is the execution of an excellent branding strategy. Branding is foundational. Marketing is executional. 
all those marketing elements, PR, you know, any kind of media, doesn't mean social media, any kind of media. It's just channels. It's channels of communication to reach a target audience. It's just the same process that it's always been. There's new media. Great. Same process. It's just the process. Yes. Branding is foundational marketing is executional so your marketing please please don't ever say we just need some leads we'll do the branding later okay please that's the quintessential backwards thought okay defining and languaging the brand and giving it unique language consistent language that gets you credit for what makes you outstanding and the transfers energy and to give it a recognizability of a look that reinforces what you stand for you will come alive in a way that 90 percent of brands never do that's all nice well, I know we could talk for hours. I'm going to be following up with you after this because there's a lot we could do together. And I'm really excited about it. And I love that we had already met and then we matched on a podcasting system that we both use. Podmatch, yeah. it's our favorite. There you go. Well, um, yeah, Podmatch, there you go. And it's we, a match. We should do, so. we should do a, a testimonial for Absolutely. Podmatch. <laughs> <laughs> but I will have all the links to your website, your Calendly, so people know how to find you. I want everybody really follow rich buy his book you know i tell you what i will do i'm yeah. going to pull up the link to the half day that we do because the link is always the same and it just the day changes Great. and please just let people know it because this is a blessing there it is awesome it's richbrands.thrivecart.com special half day event that's okay. it every month. And so if you can't come this month, come next. Nice. And it'll get you in a right headspace about branding and branding you. Well, Rich, thank you for sharing just a small portion of your story. There's so much more <laughs> that we can get into. I will definitely have to have you come back on because I want you to talk more about the book building part of branding and all of that because we didn't even get to touch on that. What a delight. Yeah. I just handed three books. I helped a client's write in December and we're working on two. Mine is coming out, so I'm finishing mine. And then we have two other behind it it's a blessing the other thing is i didn't mention at all the seventh episode of the impact brand doctor podcast yeah. launched this past thursday so the impact brand doctor podcast with rich kozak uplifts brands with straight talk that you can trust and people bring their challenges and their vision awesome. about the next level of their brand whether they're just getting started and next levels launch or whether they've been doing something for a long time and they want to take it to another level but they're stuck at the starting gate to the next level of their brand and they don't know how to get through that gate or form the stairs to get to the next level <laughs> and yeah awesome i'll make sure to include that as well thank you for giving all of our listeners a little straight talk <laughs> Bless your heart. About, yeah right? hey, don't yeah. we need more of that don't we yeah we like, do man. about how everybody can make an impact with Not your the fluff <laughs> <Just> <laughs> tell so this process <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome. Really? Well, thank you to the audience for listening to another amazing expert on your brand Amplified. I'll be back again in a few days with another amazing expert. I love this platform because I get to speak to fantastic people all day and get inspired all over again in my career of choice. So Rich, thank you. We will make sure everybody has access to all the amazing things you have to offer. And until next time, I'll be back again. Want more? Check out amplifywithannica.com or follow me on socials at amplifywithannica.com.